The next thing we want to talk about is the mixed layer and its influence on primary productivity. You'll recall from our discussion in chapter seven that the mixed layer is that region of the upper ocean in which the water is mixed. Okay, it's all homogeneous. So in the mixed layer, we have the same temperature, same salinity, same amount of nutrients to the depth of the thermocline, the pycnocline, the halocline, the neutrocline. So the surface mixed layer really in the depth of the surface mixed layer um, will determine how deep or how shallow phytoplankton, at least within the mixed layer, remain. And so as this mixed layer gets deeper or shallower, because the mixed layer is deepening, phytoplankton are going to be mixed deeper. If the mixed layer gets shallower, then phytoplankton will be held up near the surface. Hopefully you see where I'm going with this because it's the depth of the mixed layer that really controls the amount of light that a particular phytoplankton, that groups of phytoplankton experience in the water column. So let's take a look at this. This is again from chapter seven, figure seven to five. And here's what I want you to pay attention to this time. Let's look again at temperate latitudes. In the winter, we have a very deep mixed layer because of surface loss of buoyancy so that we have cooling and we have water sinking very deep causing a very deep mixed layer and a very mixed up water column in this case temperatures are going to be low but there's going to be lots of nutrients in the water column in this case because of this mixing as sunlight comes up as surface waters warm we have a shallowing of the mixed layer and again as you recall from um, chapter seven this process is called stratification and we have formation of a thermocline and in the summer we have a very shallow thermocline and in the fall we actually have a, a little bit of a breaking down or a destratification of the water column as the mixed layer depth becomes a little bit deeper but in the fall also because surface waters are cooling and mixing deeper we also get some of this water down here mixed up into the upper ocean, into the mixed layer. So here we have deep mixed layer, a shallowing of the mixed layer, and a slight deepening of the mixed layer in temperate latitudes. Now let's think about how that might affect phytoplankton. As phytoplankton are in these surface waters above, within the mixed layer, above the thermocline, as it gets shallower, there's going to be more light. So one of the reasons that we see this bloom of phytoplankton in the spring in the subarctic Atlantic is because the mixed layer has gotten shallow. If you're getting mixed down very deep, you're seeing very high light, but then you're also seeing very low light. But if you're held up towards the light all the time, then you're going to have lots of light and the net result is for phytoplankton. To bloom and the same story is really true in polar latitudes although this figure doesn't do it quite justice but we have shallowing of the mixed layer depth phytoplankton are now held up near the surface where there's lots of light and so phytoplankton growth is going to be more pronounced and faster when we have a shallow mixed layer depth now the opposite thing is kind of true in tropical latitudes because we have plenty of sun the problem is in tropical latitudes that it's always stratified and so the opportunity to mix these waters and resupply nutrients to the surface waters is very limited and so where in temperate and polar latitudes phytoplankton tend to be light limited except in the summer in temperate latitudes in tropical latitudes phytoplankton tend to be nutrient limited because surface waters are generally very, have very low concentrations of biologically important nutrients. And so phytoplankton growth is very slow. Now, if anything in temperate latitudes resembles tropical latitudes, that's the summer condition. So in spring, one of the reasons as we go from spring to summer, one of the reasons we see the, that 
bump in phytoplankton growth and then it begins to slow down is because in summer, phytoplankton living in temperate latitudes begin to have begin to be limited by the supply of nutrients. They use up all the nutrients in the spring, and so as nutrient concentrations fall, the growth rates of phytoplankton fall. So in temperate latitudes then, we have a bloom of phytoplankton. We then have the onset of nutrient limitation, and then we have a small bump in phytoplankton growth because we get slight mixing in the fall. So here we have, again, a really good example of how physical conditions, light, impact the depth of the mixed layer, and at the same time, through the interaction of the phytoplankton with the water, we have a chemical process whereby phytoplankton are removing nutrients. And so when we get mixing again, such as in the fall and the winter, and chemicals are resupplied, then phytoplankton can grow again. So this is this figure alone, it would have been if we added some phytoplankton to it, would be a really good example or it's a good illustration for talking about the relationship between physical processes, light and vertical mixing, biological processes, the productivity of phytoplankton, and chemical processes, the availability of nutrients in surface waters. A picture tells thousands of words.